And suddenly, it looks like we're right here at an old school bus. But we're going to get the quick five minute sawmill tour by Daniel. Raph, he's the oldest. This is the old Cuba, New Mexico Young sawmill. And this is, uh, where do you want to start here? This would be starting at the very end, last finished polished piece, if we started here. But I say we start over here. So, uh, and so we just walked, we just walked into the soil area that we were just looking at from the outside. You can see it's pretty intense equipment wise and old construction wise in here. We're going to go over there and see what Daniel has to say. Here's one of the twins. One of the twins is David. Let me go get John. John's in the shade sleeping. It's a nice breeze out here today. So this is where all the logs get loaded and prepped uh, to go on that dolly over there. It's just a train dolly and it goes up and down the tracks. And so the logs over here are staged out there. They're unloaded from the trucks. The road goes in a circular pattern around the whole sawmill. And then you just keep with the front end loader, load the logs here. So here's the train or the dolly where these logs from this spot right here, this was where granddad John S. would sit and then his probably grandfather would sit John Young. It's a long line of Johns and they control the whole sawmill, this whole setup right here with these levers and a few switches start and stop. Controls the whole sawmill. Let's go take a more... Uh, Let's take a closer look at that dolly because there's there's a lot of moving pieces on that. Only five over there. So Granddad would turn on all these switches and run everything off an electric motor. Or these different switches control different components. And there's a big old what's that diesel over there? Yep, it's a big old diesel. And this stuff looks junky, but it's, so it works run, perfectly uh, fine. Phase and basically he'd use the diesel motor to convert the. Uh, energy back into electric and you run everything off electric motors to turn the yeah that's motor. right i mean I was, I was out here plenty of times at least four years ago so walt did fire that that thing um was fired up i think a year ago so in 2019 that that's still running yeah it still pours out and that that's the heart of the sawmill that that's the motor that runs this whole sawmill Run over there you can see a couple of Junky old looking easy chairs. Now you think, uh uh, I'm not gonna have that in my house, I'm not gonna sit on it. But if you're out here helping, and it's been several hours and you've been helping out here, those easy chairs are in high demand. Everybody wants one. So over there's Raf's RV. AC and everything, and so Daniel's gonna go get the babies and bring them over to show them some more things. It's actually pretty cool out here today, but the AC is nice. Wild, wild west. A little bit more than they offered at Low House on the Prairie, but still the same concept. So, these are the saw blades that uh, were used to cut the boards to whatever depth. And again, that depth is controlled on this uh, dolly. Um, and we'll go in over that. We'll go over that later. But these saw, when we had a big enough log, you'd have to have both of these going. And they, they spun different directions. That one spun uh, counterclockwise, and this one spun clockwise. So here we are on the other side of the saw blades. Whoa, watch your step there. Excuse me. Here's those comfortable chairs I was mentioning. Okay, what's going on over here, guys? So this wheel is, uh, we're talking see it, yeah. exactly how how uh, how much to cut and the depth and, and everything of the Yeah, I'm not the sure if the, uh, the, the camera's picking up those numbers on that device right there. What do those mean? So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just, uh, is it a foot or? Yeah, well, it's, it tells them that and, and then the depth. So we know oh, the depth. Oh, okay. The yeah, so they come, they get cut, they come down exactly. this conveyor. So that, that gets you the, the depth. There. And then if you want to get the width, this machine achieves that. This is the 
trimmer. Oh yeah, I remember using this a while so back. So you'd have a man working here. He'd be grabbing because these, the, all everything would be spinning. He was sending the, the boards down like this one. You send it up here, and then that would get you your your width. You'd have a guy standing here, and this was my job. I built that back when I was working, and it's still here today. It wasn't just mine, but this was my version. Everybody that's worked this position had something like this. And just so you could get the logs, you got to always watch that right there. It's always something like that. Yeah, I, I stumbled on that one a minute second ago, didn't I? And you got to get up here, and when the when the bark from the especially the big ponderosa pines it gets stuck there you gotta clean it out but you don't want to go too far just enough to get it out of there yeah i remember being over here and being the guy who had to get them off of these conveyor belts or even this device here and load it onto the tra load it onto the trailer this or the truck the three phase motors and more switches switch that one on switch that one that one these motors turn back on each other one you know one powers the other one and the other one powers the other one they're all in sync and on a day like this it's the middle of june it's actually pretty cool out here so you'd think it'd be a lot of hot you know disgusting work but as long as you're in the shade the breeze it's really nice in here yeah you could fill this entire valley with the smell of fresh cut pine yeah that's true then yeah i'll bring the boys home with them yeah get him in the shade okay so we're all done with that tour let's come over here real quick say again so the slabs, all the, the, the bark, the real fat, um, round parts of the boards, that first initial cut, they go up, go up and over, and and into the back of that dump truck, and that and it would end up as a slab. Yeah, and then basically the reason the sawmills hills was all here is all kinds of locals were building things, and they'd order their logs and their slices of lumber from the young sawmill. But yeah, let's just walk around real quick. You can see it's all nice out there. You can see all the old trucks. It's really pretty out here, and it's peaceful. And even though it seems like you're in the middle of nowhere, you're just a few minutes from going into town, getting something to eat, and maybe taking a bathroom break if you wanted to. And, yeah, pretty nice. You can hear that breeze now. Feels good. Sounds bad, but that breeze feels good. And so, where is Tabitha? Well, we're out at the sawmill. She's back in here, chilling and lounging. It's like 68 degrees in here at the AC and um, fantastic fan going. She has food, she has water, she has her private bathroom. You can close the door for a little more privacy. She has her kitchen. She has a couple of spots to sleep. She has her loft. She has everything. So Tabitha, Tabitha, you okay while we're out there? Come here. You okay? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I interrupted your food, sorry. You interrupted my food. Yeah, go ahead and eat. It's okay. I'm sorry. Well, we're going to get back to the sawmill. You stay here. Yeah, ignore me. Eat your food. <laughs>